Hi everyone. As I've said before, I will never ask for any financial assistance on this channel, but I will ask that you take a moment after the video to witness these two wonderful acts of God I am about to share. I'm reaching out for some support and assistance for our brother in Christ, Johnny Newkirk. Johnny has an incredible testimony, a true life of overcoming trial and adversity through drugs and addictions to losing literally everything, including his family and his possessions. Yet throughout it all, he found God, picked up his Bible, and has since been doing missionary work in Uganda and helping to do the Lord's work in spite of all he has been faced with. Johnny is just starting to raise money to be full-time in Uganda and to continue his work. So I ask, if inclined, can you please help support a true spirit-filled brother in Christ? Any amount, no matter how small, will greatly help to see this wonderful act of God fulfilled. Let's help Johnny reach his goal, for it is clearly God's will for his life. Another group that is close to my heart is Light of God in Darkness. They're doing some amazing work in Kenya and across the world. True soldiers for Christ at the grassroots level, working in the communities to strengthen their resolve and helping the needy in any way that they can. Please support these wonderful sisters in Christ. And once again, no matter, no amount is too small. For those of us that live in abundance, let us help another. Praise God for his workers. Glory to God and Maranatha. Morning, guys. I have written something that I'd like to share. Um, so I'm just going to go on with it. This morning I had this thought come over me. It was a realization that a time is coming where believers and non-believers will exist in the dark. In the darkness, when the lights go out, when the technology is shut off, where the world becomes a prison once more, and the enemy seeks to deploy their long, longly developed plans and enact all things evil upon the world. I write this not to scare you, but to remind you. And obviously, a time of God's judgments are being enacted, and he's using the enemy to fulfill his judgments. A time is coming where if you have taken no action to prepare your family, your household, and your spiritual weapons, everything will quickly become a problem for you. If you have fasted, when the food runs out, you'll be physically and mentally used to being hungry. If you have stored food and water, you know at the very least you can remain in place until this runs out, which will help to ease some of the anxieties of the situation. If you have read God's word, when your Bible gets destroyed or seized, his words will be written on your heart. If you have taught your children, then you can say to them when they cry, God is with us, no fear, remember? If you have been through trials and the fire of testing, you will know you know you have felt this way before and you know God will always see you through it and restore you. If you have been deceived by the enemy, you know not to be deceived again. All of these things, these warnings, they weren't for naught. They were to prepare you for the times to come. The things that are coming soon. The shocking truth, but it is the truth. Look around you, brothers and sisters. He has been building you up to be a soldier in Christ. Soldiers train for war, and the war drums are beating so hard right now. Before all of this, consider where we are now. In this moment we are in now, we can still speak to each other, albeit online. We can share the news and latest developments. We can spread the good news with many and using the very technology imposed upon society to do a manner of good. As a brother in Christ that I follow says, do what we can while we can because we can. Thank you, Brother Daniel. But what happens when the lights go out? Will it be an EMP? Will it be blamed on AI? Will they say it was the aliens, the demons, the planet Nibiru and its other closely related objects, the missiles from, from a submarine from a certain country? You see, there are plenty of things coming. It could be any or many of these things that trigger this. In Exodus 10, 
verses 21 to 23, we see the darkness in the land of Egypt at the time of Pharaoh and the many pestilences, the equivalent of seals. We see that God's children had light, but nobody else did, that they suffered greatly for three days in the darkness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand towards heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, couldn't see each other at all. Neither rose anyone from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. He was with them the whole time. When the trucks stop, the trains stop, the supermarkets close, fast food is no more, pandemics begin, military reigns, those five with the letters, five with the letter G towers turn on, and don't just pulse, but stay on. What then of the constant electromagnetic radiation? You can be assured those things will be on a separate grid or an array if satellites will cover them for a period. You see, without communications, are we still going to be able to work together? This is what is being warned about. All of you have, uh, all you will have will be, in, be what you have in your possession. And just to add too, so our groups that we fellowship with, that, you know, we fellowship with in the spirit, okay, that's, we'll still have access to each other through the spirit. But we have to, we have to have, uh, we have to be strengthened in the spirit in order to do that. Okay, so we can sense each other and each other's needs and each other's situation. And when something's wrong, we'll be able to still do that in the spirit um, during this chaotic time. But you know, when there's no internet, there's no phones, there's none of this stuff. And I'm not just talking about three days. You know, this this could be a a period after all this this trigger is unlike we've ever seen before okay it's not going to be like the comforts of society now brothers and sisters we must think on these things so they do not come to us as a surprise as a thief many are listening to false doctrines and waiting on a singular great multitude rapture event to save them this is not scriptural there is far greater evidence to indicate that there is an initial remnant event Years later, a great multitude event, and years later still, the final remaining remnant outpouring of the Holy Spirit before that terrible day. I'll be covering more of this in the Luke, Mark and Matthew videos on this channel. Know that if you are not part of his bride and you are not ready with your garment completely white, living a holy life of repentance and obedience and committing daily to actions of righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, then it will likely be many years of waiting in this chaos to ready oneself or preparing oneself and just to add you know you'll be in the lukewarm crowd okay the lukewarm crowd go to paradise they don't go to the third heaven so it's not just about when you go it's about where you go revelation 3 verse 14 to 16 and unto the angel of the church of laodiceans write these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Know thy works, and thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So when thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. This is a terrifying truth that we must be reminded of. You see this, you see this in the once saved, always saved false doctrine. It is a false doctrine because it teaches people their works and daily carrying of their cross do not matter. If it does not matter, then do you think God would allow you to live in sin? Do you think that the law does not apply to you? No, it makes for no rational argument. If someone is preaching to you, once saved, always saved, run for the hills. That's your warning. We see in Romans 2 the argument that they never, they never like to show. We see that the Jew was delivered... We see that the Jew has delivered the law, but Gentile adopts the law, understands the law, and is subject to it, and that the doers of the law, his commandments, are therefore justified. 
that the faith alone argument is a twisting of the scriptures. Okay, so Romans 2, verse 5 and 6. But after thy hardness and penitent, and penitent heart, treasured up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of his righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. His deeds. Everyone will be judged in accordance to their deeds. There is no exception, Jew or Gentile. Romans 2.9 Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Excuse me. But glory and glory, honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So we see that the works matter. Romans 2 verse 14. As Romans 2 14 verses 11 to 13 remind us. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law, okay, many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. It's equal. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. His commandments, his statutes. Okay? Only the doers of the law, those actions shall be justified. God's law. Those that keep his commandments, his statutes. The Gentiles created a law, uh, create a law unto themselves, is what he says, by practicing this law of the Jews, but were not initially delivered the law. Doers, both Jew and Gentile, will be justified. Only doers. Romans 3, 3 verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This verse is actually saying that the Gentiles are justified by faith because they are not subject to the law proven here because they were not delivered it, but they must obey the law. It does not mean that faith alone justifies them. There is a difference. Okay, so let's go over that again. We conclude that a man is justified by faith, okay, without the deeds of the law. That's because... Faith, okay, so faith for Jew and Gentile, a man is justified, okay, the law, both have justified equally, okay, then we don't have the law there, okay, but the law applies to both, okay, so we see here in the next section, Romans 2, for when the Gentiles which have not the law, he's saying the Gentiles, the law didn't apply to them, do by nature the things contained in the law, follow his commandments, his statutes. These having not the law are a law unto themselves. Okay, this that becomes the law for them. Okay, because those that do the law, it then becomes applicable to them. Okay, do by nature, by their nature which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, so their conscience bearing witness, okay, and their thoughts, the mean while accusing or else excusing another, okay. So he's saying that the law was delivered to the Jews, but those that decide to follow God's commandments, okay, that pick up their cross, that carry their cross, that they'll be justified in their actions by the law. It's pretty simple. I don't know why everybody seems to think that saying um, a man is justified by faith only, that you just have to say the magic words, okay, and that you're justified. That's not true at all. It's false doctrine. Now, James 2.26 reminds us, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. If you don't do these things, you don't follow his commandments and be obedient. You know, you're you're being completely, you know, you're not following, you're being lukewarm. You're not following his, you're not following his laws. James 2.24, you see how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Okay, a man is justified by works and not just faith. He has to have both. 
People that twist the scriptures to fit their own narrative will take many into the fire with them. So I implore you, read this again and understand it. We live in perilous times, my brothers and sisters. We must be careful to understand that every single day matters. Everything we do and say is being recorded and will be subject to us when we stand before the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to convict you if you have been believing in anything false. Ask Him what else you can do to prepare for when the lights go out. To sum up, we must do all we can in this period of time before everything begins. For we will be with our families on our own, without our favorite channels to derive motivation or word from. The only word we will have will be either our paper Bibles or the words that are written on our hearts. I believe this is why I have been called to study during this time of quiet, where it seems that the warnings have gone out and it is, and it is time to call the final sheep home before this next period of time begins. You can feel the calm before the storm. I was given a storm dream the other day. I, really, I could barely contain the door Okay, in this dream. I could barely hold the door was shaking the whole house and outside I saw this uh, like some sort of planetary body I don't know what it was but there was it was a huge storm coming okay and yeah it's there's a storm coming it's what the warning was you can feel the calm before the storm it has been brewing and small glimmers of lightning and thunder have started appearing a little rain and la rattling but brace yourself stay under his wing and continue to praise and worship him Share his love with others, his word, your personal revelations, but do not forget to continue to prepare yourself in any way you feel in the spirit you can. Be prepared, saints. This time is fast approaching. I felt this reminder in my heart today after prayer. Be encouraged and not dismayed. Do not allow any fear to convict you. We have been through a lot, but he loves his children and he is merciful. But do not become complacent either. Rest in him and stay in his word. Remain obedient. Watch and wait. For one day or night or whenever, the lights will go out and everything you've been taught as a soldier will be required of you. All right, the reason I wrote do not allow this to convict you is for those that have been following his commandments, being obedient and doing all those things and they know, they know in their hearts, okay, that they know that they're, they're doing his will and what he requires of them. Okay, don't allow a message like this to convict you because it can. And this is one thing that, you know, I'll say now is that I see a lot of, I see a lot of anger and a lot of do this, 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 okay, and a lot of finger pointing. And we should, we should make sure that we're keeping each other in check. But also we have to be careful not to convict each other of things as well that we haven't done. Okay, so if somebody's feeling convicted just because they're a soft touch person, um, or they're they're a softer hearted person, then then don't feel it if you know in your heart that you've been doing the right thing. You know, I I attended. I'll just share this with you quickly. But I attended a really wonderful live the other day, and I tell you what, the live group, the session was just full of people, and it was just it was love, like the whole session. Okay. But there was reminders in there, the times are in. And it was it was delivered in a way that came from love. And I tell you what, it, it does come across, you know, when, when it comes across, you know, it doesn't always have to be harsh, guys. It doesn't, we don't always have to be, you know, so harsh with each other, okay? Sometimes we have to, you know, if there's a message, it depends, depends on what, you know, the Holy Spirit's putting on you to deliver. Um, but just be careful because you, the last thing you want to do is to, you know, um, put someone at unease or, or implant doubt in their minds when they don't, they shouldn't have doubt. When they've been doing the right things and they've been following God's commandments, they've been, you know, staying and walking in the spirit. They've been, you know, living a holy life and doing all those things. So, and nobody's perfect. Um, I had a few rough days recently where it took me it took me a little bit of time to snap out of it, and um, you know I had some things going on in my home life and, and just took me a little bit to snap out of it. So it happens, guys, and it's it's perfectly fine. Um, but um, but just make sure that you know when you kind of get yourself out of that that jam that we're in, you know through prayer and 
whatever it might might be required, um, that we get back to it and we, we pick up that cross and we keep going. And, um, and that's what this message is about today. It's about start putting your mindset into tomorrow anything could happen. It could be today. Okay? It could be right now. It could be an hour from now that it all changes. Okay? You could re- see this message and it could just happen. Or it could be six months away or a year away, but it doesn't matter how long it is, okay? What matters is this is the time you're given now. Use that time to prepare. Use that time to get yourself ready, okay? Whether it's physical preparations, as far as your food, water supplies, as far as making sure you've got some spare Bibles stashed somewhere, um, you know, making sure you printed out your some of your deliverance um, thing, you know, warfare favorite warfare prayers or things like that because you're going to need them okay you're not going to be able to use them on your phone anymore um, at coming a certain a certain point in time so just think of start thinking through all the things you can do to prepare um, and you know just just try and try and be ready for as many situations as you can but don't don't be paranoid god's with you okay but also too he warns us don't don't just think because he's warned us that we should ignore the warnings and do nothing and that he'll just do everything for us um you know we have to take some responsibility for our own lives and our families as well so you know don't don't be convicted if you know that you've been doing the right thing um you know if you don't have the financial means to prepare then that's a different story okay that's uh, and i understand that um not everybody has the financial means to be able to prepare most of God's children might be living in cars or moving house to house every day or, you know, those sort of things. Um, so do what you can. Um, and if you're somebody, um, you know, who who is able to help somebody else, then you help somebody else prepare, you know, whether, you know, donating to, you know, to help them out or, or whatever you feel that you need to do. But you should do it from a cheerful place. You should be willing to do it. You should not be convicted or feel guilted into doing anything. You should do it from your heart and do it through love, uh, whatever you choose to do. So I'm going to stop there, guys. I've got some more study stuff coming. Um, I'll see if I have time to do it now um, or whether I leave it for a bit later on. But um, but some interesting little discoveries. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy the video. And I hope you're doing well too. I often think about how all you guys are doing um, when going through the going through the ringer. So um, going through the suffering, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling feeling peaceful and feeling feeling good. Um, but I just have to I have to stay in the warfare prayers. I have to keep fighting because when I get attacked, you know, I I tend to get it's like a barrage. So the warfare prayers if you have a look in my community section and scroll down a bit you'll see a audio book with some warfare um it's it's wonderful i I go through that and it's you know um armor of god all sorts of stuff in there there's yes lots of deliverance stuff you can do self-deliverance if you feel like you got any strongholds or anything's attacking you i tell you what like the voice has just stopped once i started doing the these things you know i stopped getting having to rebuke all the time it happens occasionally very like occasionally um but it's usually if like something's trying to steer me back to an old sin or an old thing so um yeah that peace is something i haven't experienced for a long time and so i i really urge you all if you are having that fight and it's you're just like this is crazy you probably need deliverance guys okay don't be ashamed of it it's just part of it you know we've all got crazy pasts and and things and we've all got different you know uh, people have different anointings people have different you know um different things that god wills for them and 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 so you know we we don't know it's, you know i i don't know what god's got planned for me um, but i know i get attacked a lot and i know that once i started doing that it's it's started ceasing and it's you know, the clarity starting to come and it's, it's really, really good guys. So, okay, I'm going to stop waffling on now. God bless Maranatha. Love you guys. See ya.